Welcome back, Zerk fans, to Natalie is at Dawn. I remain your host, Chad, if you're A333, and this last match for tonight is going to be between Dime Friend and Anarchid on La Isla Bonita. I think we saw this matchup before, actually, between the two players. I don't remember Google Frog. Not going to worry about it right now. But Dime Friend starting out with the Shieldbot Factory off the base cliff. So on the main plateau. Good idea. Oh, Shieldbot Factory got reanimated slightly. That's neat. I mean, the shadow, the baked in shadow has to be changed, but, you know, or gotten rid of entirely. But hey, they've got a new thing with the new animations. That's cool. And the gunship plant is still what it's always been. And we could go for that, going for the blast wings, because apparently blast wings have become super popular in the last few weeks. I hadn't noticed that, but yeah, I guess that has happened. I mean, it's always been kind of popular. So, whatever. At any rate, that is... That's likely to be death. Time for losing possibly two metal extractors. Well, losing the ability to build one, losing another. The main metal extractors are up front, and they aren't losing a whole lot in the process. The bandit doing a fine job defending itself. I mean, at the cost of its own life, but you know, defending the rest of the base, so that still works. Yeah, blast wings, man. I mean, they've always been kind of popular, but did I miss some change that makes them even more popular? Because it seems like. Everything is just coming up Blastwing recently. Like, that's... Everything... Every game I've casted today has started out with Blastwing rushing and then going to something else. And I can see why. It's just... I'm surprised it didn't happen before, and I'm not sure why it's happening now. So it's a bit weird. It's cool. But it just seems the timing is off. Like, it should have happened a while ago, in theory. Regardless, with the Defender up, the Blast Wings are pretty much completely rebuffed. And the Bandit coming in here with basically no defenses. The Lotus should be up in a couple seconds, but even with that... Actually, with that, the Bandit's going to die. But even with that, a bunch of Bandits, if there were a bunch of Bandits, of which there are not because there are no Bandits being built. In fact, there's nothing being built, Dime Prince folks, entirely in rebuilding their economy because they lost all of their Metal Extractors to Blast Wings. So I'll grant that Anarchid is getting a lot of value out of that. Blast wings are really scary. I didn't actually realize just how scary those things are. <laughs> and Dime Friend pointing out that Defender... I mean, Defender's... Oh, right, that's why. Dime Friend's pointing out Defender cost was increased. And yeah, that's true. They, their cost was increased quite a bit. It was increased from 80 to 120 in order to avoid Defender spam. But the problem is that Defender spam was the one thing keeping Blast Wings in check. Now, I don't think defenders should have their cost reduced. I kind of like the higher cost, unless maybe a hundred, but blast wings might be a little too valuable. I think the problem is more that because defenders can miss blast wings, then it's even worse. Because because they miss blast wings, it's like it's not even a guaranteed kill. Yeah, they'll one shot blast wings, but if they miss the blast wing, they get one shot by the blast wing. So the value just isn't there. I can totally see why that's a thing then. Anyway, Anarchid switching over to Shieldbot Factory, and not much coming out of Dime Friend. They're still focusing on rebuilding their economy. Not a whole lot of energy. A lot more metal than energy and about to excess as well. Anarchid, same thing. Not sure where their energy production is. They Ah, that's where it is. But these wind generators should be enough to make it no longer excessing. And then with the Shieldbot Factory on top of the gunship line, yeah, they'll be fine. Anarchid should be fine. Dime Friend, on the other hand, I'm fairly certain is going to start to excess very shortly. And if we look... Maybe? Just maybe? I don't know. It looks like there's a possibility that- no, they've, they're accessing. They are accessing. They are not even building enough to not access. Bit of a shame. Actually, they're- what are they- what are you doing? Dying friend commander, what are you doing? I- Oh, I see. That makes sense. Are you building stuff in the ocean? And yes, you are, because that is the most valuable generator in the game, is the title generator. I mean, okay, it can't be quite as valuable as a wind gen at full wind, but it is way more valuable than solar collectors. And harder to get to as well. So I like that thinking. On the other hand, though, Anarchid just is getting way ahead. They're getting everything built everywhere. They have wasps, so they can very easily build on the water if they want to. If they want to get their own tidal generators, that's not a problem. And they can also deal with the tidal generators if they happen to be lucky enough to approach from the south, which they might just be. I don't know. They might just decide to do that. Also, why are these 
<laughs> I'm okay. I'm not sure what they're going to be up to, but presumably those convicts will build something sooner or later. Not sure when, but you know, eventually. Ah, that is now. They're going to get burned, but they should be okay. I think the convict will survive that. I mean, like I said, blast wings don't deal damage if you're not in their flame cloud. They don't set things on fire for very long, which is good. So, with that in mind, looks like Anarchid is actually running into the same problem as well. I wonder if this game is the same issue as last game where people weren't taking it seriously because both players are accessing again. And I don't know why we aren't seeing less excess. We are seeing a character coming up from Anarchid. I just would have expected that far sooner. Possibly people are out of practice. I don't know. Dying from the air switch and the caretaker as well. So Dying Friend should be okay at getting their economy back on track. Though, once again, they're still behind Anarchid. Quite a bit behind, actually. Not near as much as the last game. Actually, last couple games. The, the economy difference was massive. But they're still there. It's still a difference. But Dying Friend should be okay for now. The problem, of course, being the Thug Law Ball coming in and not much to really defend against. The bandits aren't going to be doing the job they need to do. I seriously don't understand why bandits... Like, why, of all things, would you go for the bandits? Go for something else. Go for... Go for thugs yourself. Go for racketeers. Actually, racketeers would be a really good idea because that would completely break the shields. And... Roach! Yeah, that's risky. It might work. I... No, it won't work. It'll die a meaningless death. I don't think that's accomplishing anything, but... Some people might think it's poetic. But yeah, that was completely worthless. So yeah, the Shieldbot Factory is basically done for Dime Friend. Lotuses can't really help out too much, and there's not a whole lot of army coming in to deal with Anarchid, so I think Dime Friend might be going down right now. The air plant's almost done. The Thunderbird... Thunderbird could save this. Everything but the Shieldbot Factory, at least. Oh, those bandits, they had waited! They would waited just, like, five seconds for the Thunderbird to get in there. It would have been fine. I don't know why there's no coordination. Dime Friend, you could have had this! Actually, they still got rid of the Outlaw, so it could still work out. Regardless, the Thunderbird is still more valuable. I do not understand why that bandit army came in prematurely. Yeah, I don't... I'm not sure what Dime Friend can do. Like, okay, they got that in there, but the Shieldbot factory is now stunned. And there's still the Brawler in, and there's still another thug coming in. Like, there's nothing really to deal with these units that are all stunned out. Or that are disarmed. Oh, never mind. It can build. Regardless, it didn't end up doing anything, so a bit of a shame. Nice try. I like the idea. It was it was well thought out. It just didn't actually do anything, because the one bit wasn't well thought out was keeping an army in reserve to actually deal with things after you disarm everything. Which did not happen. Actually, no, never mind. It looks like disarming does stop construction. I've never been totally sure. I know EMP does, but I wasn't sure if disarming did. But evidently... That? Evidently it does, and what is with this... I don't know what's with the graphics on the... On all the lighting. It's like weirdly fuzzy. I suspect that's something to do with either the grass or the texture on the ground, but it's bizarre. And distracting. At any rate, Dime Friend's still going. I'm not sure how, but they are still going. They still have... A way of saving their Shieldbot Factory. Barely, but they manage. So hey, that's something. They managed to get their Shieldbot Factory back online. Everything else around is dead, but the Shieldbot Factory is at least fine, and at least they have ways of getting rid of the gunships coming in. Which isn't nothing, but it is possibly too little too late. I really don't know how much that's going to help things. My guess is not much. I really doubt it. We'll find out shortly, but I just don't see anything really helping this out at all. If you think about it, what is going to help out other than, I don't know, going for... In this attack here, that might do it. Get rid of the brawler, get rid of a couple brawlers, get rid of a couple tridents. Try to take care of a few metal extractors in the process. That could theoretically do the trick. 
Like, Dying Friend's not that behind economically compared to Anarchid. The problem is, of course, that they are behind in other ways. Like, actually, even, no, unit value is still pretty close. The attrition's worked out well enough that the unit value has maintained relative parity. So you know what? This actually might work. The excess is the only thing that's been a problem. Actually, metal use and excess. But Dying Friend's economy is actually getting back on track. And tactically, looking at the map, they are managing to get a decent army up. And Anarchid's only taken over the northeast. Dying Friend's starting to take over the southeast. The only thing is they need to maintain that, which they are going to lose, because they haven't got much defenses. The Stardust, ah, 39 seconds, that's, that's too much. It's way too long. It's not going to get up in time. And how these... Raven's actually managed to do a fair amount of damage, keeping, keeping Anakin's army down. Dying Friend able to get some reclaim, and unfortunately, that's excessing. Oh, if that wasn't excessing, these caretakers were being used to actually build something. Why, Dying Friend, do you not use repeat build? I keep seeing this. Well, it's not just Dying Friend, but I keep seeing people not use repeat build and then excessing as a result. I do not understand why you do not use repeat build. I, I get it. It's not always going to give you the most optimal composition, but at least... Okay, there we go. We're seeing repeat build now. Dying Frame does have it on, but it's like, I just don't understand why stuff isn't being built at all times. I get there are occasionally instances where you want to have stuff completely reserved for building economy. You want to have all your economy for building more economy. That I can see. But at this point, with excessing and with all the tools needed to not excess, I don't understand why construction isn't something that's just done all the time. Regardless, it is finally being done, but it might be too little too late, given that Anarchid's army is still way bigger. Like, if we look at unit value at this point, Anarchid's now got a 4,000 metal advantage by unit value. I'll grant that Dimefriend has a lot of type counters, but that's still a massive advantage for unit value, especially with these razors in place. I mean, granted, these razors are going down. The bandits are able to deal some damage, and, and Dimefriend's been able to counterattack effectively, but still... Just considering all the damage that's been done, Dime Frame is going to be fighting extremely hard against a foe that's got a massive advantage. And unfortunately, losing this this outlaw is going to mean these bandits are going to rush in there and tear everything to pieces. There it is. There's the bandit rush. This is exactly as it's going to go, because what else can happen, really? And is there a shipyard? No. But yeah, that's it. I mean, really, it came down to the unit value at the end. Dying Freund had a shot right here, and then let their metal excess. Like, this metal excess lines up with this complete shift in unit value. I just don't understand why not use repeat build almost all the time, like, as a rule. I do not understand that. At all. It baffles me. I mean, granted, I use repeat build, and I still occasionally will excess, but that's more just a lack of care- I don't always build caretakers in time, or build- enough energy and time. I get that. That's a basic mistake that I still make sometimes. But the resources were there. The build power was there. It just wasn't a matter of building. It's a matter of not building things. I do not get that. And Dime Friends in the chat, but they haven't really explained themselves. Like, I don't get why Dime Friend doesn't like building things. Just I've just noticed that. They don't seem to like building things unless they are absolutely having to. But then they don't build storages so that they can power build something whenever they know exactly what they need to build. Because I see maybe their idea is build when they know exactly what's happening. Like, build on reaction. Which would make sense if there was, like, three or four storages in the base so that they had two or three thousand metal they could just pour into anything at a moment's notice. Like, have a hundred build power, have loads of storages, you're powering 300 metal per second, or sorry, 100 metal per second, from a 3,000 metal container. Like, yeah, you could build loads of stuff with that. Okay, well, okay, Dime Friend apparently is exactly what I think, which is build rapidly in response to something. I get that. I don't totally agree with it, but I kind of get that. Like, I feel like the armies that you get doing that have a risk of being completely stuffed as they're being built. Like, you won't necessarily get the army up in time enough. I just don't see why you don't build storages. Like, if, you're gonna, if that's the strategy, it makes sense to build storages and then just power build whatever you need to build. Like, loads of caretakers, loads of storages, hold onto the money as long as possible, and then burst it into units. Anyway, that was that, so I hope you enjoyed that, and... Sorry about the break, I guess. It's a... I don't know what I was not casting, but whatever. I'm back, so thanks for watching, and... Have a good night, everyone.